Prince Ribbit, written by Jonathan Emmett, illustrated by Polly Bernatine, published by Peachtree Atlanta. This is a Kentucky Bluegrass Award nominee for 2018. The Princess and the Frog Prince got married and lived happily ever after, read Princess Arabella, closing the book with a satisfied sigh. Princess Lucinda frowned. That silly girl treated the Frog Prince so badly, she was lucky he married her. If I ever met a talking frog, I wouldn't make the same mistake, agreed Arabella. Princess Martha rolled her eyes. She'd liked facts more than fairy tales, and real frogs more than enchanted ones. She'd heard a real frog croaking in the royal pond many times, but she could never spot him. He's a clever little thing, thought Martha. Martha was right. The frog was very clever indeed. He often listened in on the sister's stories, and the more he heard of princes and princesses, the more he longed to live like them. The frog dreamed of sleeping in a soft bed, eating fine foods, and wearing a beautiful crown. And he'd just come up with a cunning plan to make his dream come true. Yuck! Go away, you slimy little beast! shrieked Arabella and Lucinda as the frog hopped out in front of them. But the frog did not go away. Instead, he cleared his throat <clears throat> and spoke. Allow me to introduce myself, said the sly frog. My name is Prince Ribbit. Arabella and Lucinda stared open-mouthed, but Martha was delighted. It's a frog, she shouted. A talking frog! Actually, I am an enchanted prince, he said. A jealous wizard turned me into a frog because I was so astonishingly handsome. If only there was a way to break the spell. But there is, cried Lucinda. It's in this book. You just need to be looked after by a pretty princess like me. Or a pretty princess like me, said Arabella. And then you'll turn back into your old, astonishingly handsome self, and we can live happily ever after. Lucinda and Arabella took Prince Ribbit back to the palace and gave him whatever he wanted. Lucinda let him sleep on her pillow, while Arabella let him eat from her plate. But the more Princess Martha saw of the frog, the more suspicious she became. Why are you making such a fuss of him? she asked as Prince Ribbit hopped around the dinner table. Because he's an enchanted prince, said Arabella, and that's how you break the spell. Just because it's in a book doesn't mean it's true, said Martha. And with that, she went to the Royal Library to look up the truth about frogs. A mother frog lays eggs, she explained to her sisters. Then the eggs turn into tadpoles and the tadpoles turn into frogs. But frogs don't ever turn into princesses. Just because it's in a book doesn't mean it's true, replied her sisters. So Lucinda and Arabella continued to pamper Prince Ribbit. They let him sleep in the biggest, softest bed and gave him the finest clothing and a beautiful new crown. Martha was the only person who saw Prince Ribbit for what he really was. You may be clever, but you're just an ordinary frog, she insisted. Just because it's in a book doesn't mean it's true, said Prince Ribbit. This is hopeless, thought Martha. 
My sisters will never believe me, no matter how many books of facts I show them. But I suppose I'm just as stubborn. I've never read their storybooks. Perhaps I should. So Martha gathered a big pile of fairy tales and began to read. She was surprised to find that while the stories might not be true, they were often funny, exciting, and inspiring. And after Martha had read them all, she knew exactly what to do with Prince Ribbit. If you're really an enchanted prince, why hasn't the spell been broken yet? Martha asked Prince Ribbit the next morning. Prince Ribbit shifted uneasily in his little golden throne and adjusted his little crown. Perhaps it's because I've not been treated well enough, he suggested. You seem very well treated to me, said Martha. I think it's time we try something different. What's the one thing that will always break an evil spell? True love's kiss, cried Arabella and Lucinda. Me first, cried Arabella, planting a big wet smacker on Prince Ribbit's clammy cheek. You don't love him as much as I do, said Princess Lucinda, snatching the frog from her sister and squashing his face in a passionate smooch. But no matter how many kisses they gave him, Prince Ribbit remained very much a frog. And in the end, both princesses realized that this was all he'd ever been and all he'd ever be. I suppose I should go back to my pond, sighed the frog, taking off his beautiful crown. But he looked so sad that Martha couldn't help feeling sorry for him. Please don't go, she said. Any animal smart enough to fool my sisters would be fun to have around. And while I might not want a handsome prince as a husband, I'd love to have a clever frog as a friend. She picked up the frog and gave him a gentle kiss. The instant Martha kissed him, a huge puff of pink smoke appeared, and the frog turned into a handsome young prince. In fact, he was so handsome that Martha decided that she did want to marry him after all. So she fell into his arms, and they both lived happily ever after. And if that's not the ending you were expecting, then remember... Just because it's in a book doesn't mean it's true. The